Okay, we had to switch our recording. Sorry about that. We'll go ahead and continue on with our uh, council retreat. And were we going to have a presentation by Board of Health? Yes, so um, I would ask council to convene as the Board of Health. Um, and then we have Amanda here to kind of give an overview of roles and responsibilities between Board of Health um, and public health in the state or our jurisdiction, and then talk about some agenda items um, moving forward. Okay, so um, items one through three are really Board of yawn. It, it, they are focused on Board of Health only? Yes, yes because okay. that's a different, uh, you're a different legislative body with the Board of Health. Okay. So uh, we'll do that at the end, we'll adjourn Board of Health and then go as the council. All right. We'll remind you. All right, we are now convened as the Board of Health. And Amanda, you were gonna... I do know the agenda for public comment. Yes, we need to take uh, public comment on agenda items only because council may be giving final direction regarding agenda. And that's something we need to <laughs> address um, later in, in the uh, retreat. Okay, so I, the room is empty. Do we have anyone online? And I don't have anyone with their hand raised online yet. If you'd like to comment, please raise your hand at the bottom of the screen. And I, I don't see anyone. Okay, so that was my confusion that public comment would be the first discussion point of the Board of Health, and that, that's what prompted my other uh, comment. All right, well, it sounds like we have no public comment for our Board of Health meeting this morning. So, roles and responsibilities by Amanda. It is now, thank you. Uh, my name is Amanda Michaelbrink. I'm a deputy prosecuting attorney for the prosecutor's office here in Clark County, and I represent um, the Board of Health and the uh, public and the county public health department. I just wanted to do, if you could go to the next, the first slide, I just want to do a quick overview of the different statutory um, requirements and responsibilities across um, the state law um, and just give some uh, uh, an update. So there are three statutes that really help um, give input as to what the local health officer is to do, what the local board of health is to do, and how those boards of health are supposed to be um, created. And so there's specific statute 7805.070 gives you the duties for the health officer, 705.060 gives the duties for the board of health, and then there again, um, there's a recent change in the law that, that changed kind of those boards of health. So with the next slide, I've laid out the different duties of the Board of Health. So this is, this is for um, you all. And the basic idea is that, that the Board of Health is to supervise all the matters pertaining to the preservation of life and health of the people in this jurisdiction. And so there's a specific list of, of um, areas where the Board of Health does this under the statute, and I've listed those out here. So it's to enforce the um, public health state rules um, of the State Board of Health through the local health, health officer, supervise the maintenance uh, of all health and sanitary measures um, to protect the health of Clark County, um, enact the local rules that, need, that are needed to preserve um, and promote public health, provide for the prevention, control, and abatement of nuisances, provide for the control and prevention of um, any dangerous or contagious disease, make reports to the Board of Health, and establish fee schedules for issuing or renewing permits. In looking through these duties that the Board of Health has under state law, the, the duties are, are are to direct the Board of or excuse me, the local health officer or the local health department on how to do the things that they have to do under state law. So the, the goal for the Board of Health is to create the, the, the um, ordinances, the rules, the other avenues, the budget for the public health and for the local health officer to do all of the things that they need to do under state law. That is what this um, provision is, is meant to do. So, but again, there is also the provision that says that the Board of Health does supervise all those matters pertaining to the preservation of life and health. 
the next issue, the next one is um, that if you, there we go. So for the Board of Health, the main issue is that if, if a member refuses to do or obey any of the rules or regulations, that could um, lead to a misdemeanor charge. I'm not aware of any Board of Health member ever being charged with a misdemeanor under this, but the point of this is to um, show the show the board that there's the statute the, the excuse me the state does take the 705 requirement seriously and does want the board of health members to participate and be active within their um, duties. Moving on to the next slide is where the duties of the local health officers comes in. And so again, as you see, the number one thing is that the local health officer acts under the direction of the local board of health. Um, and this provision does at times cause a little bit of confusion and some um, tension as far as what does that mean to supervise, to act under the direction of the local board of health. And so we have continued to try to ascertain that. We're continuing to work through um, necessarily how that works. But from what I, from putting together the previous statute and this statute, Again, what it appears is that the um, local board of health does direct the public health officer in certain air in the areas that it can, which is the the ordinances, the budget, and the other overseeing um, uh, elements of that previous statute. So the local health officer enforces the public health statutes of the state and the rules of the board of health, as well as the secretary of health and all of the local rules and ordinances that have been enacted. Enacted. Um, they have to maintain the health and sanitation of Clark County, control the prevent, control and prevent the spread of dangerous diseases, inform the public about diseases, and then if you flip to the next slide, there's also abate the nuisances, which was mentioned in the last statute, attend the conferences that the Secretary of Health, Secretary of health calls, and then collect the fees um, that you have set. Um, for permits and licenses, inspect public water system, and then take measures necessary to promote public health. And this last section is um, what I would consider kind of a catch-all. The specific language really indicates that the, the local health officer is meant to rely on, and I'm going to say him because we have a male local health officer, is meant to rely on their knowledge and expertise in, in promoting public health. Um, moving on to the next slide, there are specific qualifications for the local health officer that were required under state law. So they either have to be a physician and, or excuse me, they have to be a physician with a master's in public health. Um, there is also, um, they must be able to employ technical and personnel and other personnel um, as approved by the hiring administrator, which is in this instance of Kathleen Otto. Um, can, on the next slide, there, the qualifications continue. They must have a license to practice medicine. They're, like they mentioned, the public health. Um, if, if a county, if a jurisdiction fails to appoint a local health officer, the Secretary of State will come in and appoint someone for us. And the thing that I am not aware of and, and I don't know is if if we have a local health officer, but as someone who is refusing to do an element of what they do, of whether or not the state would step in to fill that element that they're refusing to do. I, it, that sounds weird, but I don't know if that's something that would happen. Um, this, as I said, the state may remove that health officer and then the state charges the county for those services that it provides. Um, on the next slide, and some of you may be aware, there was a state law change, I think in 2021 or 2022, that changed the makeup of local boards of health. Um, and so it expanded that beyond elected officials and it required a, a list of uh, other professionals and other consumers of public health. And so as you can see on this screen, you know, medical ethicists, military members, consumers of public health, other individuals involved with the public health system and other health systems within the jurisdiction have to be on the board of health. Um, in Clark County, this law actually um, doesn't specifically apply. Obviously, our Board of Health is made up of our five elected county counselors, and that is because we had a health advisory committee before this law was enacted. And so that advisory committee 
meets this standard. And so really at, at this point, there, there are the, the advisory committee, the Board of Health, and then the, the public health officer. So there's three layers of, of involvement in Clark County. On the next slide. So as I mentioned, the five county counselors are our Board of Health in Clark County. And the only other thing on this slide is that if there are future changes under the, the statute for the local Board of Health composition, we may have to then abide by that statute. I don't know if we will continue to be excluded. On the final slide, I just wanted to point out again that these are the, the different areas of kind of influence on the health officer's authority and ability to act. And so the, the Board of Health and the advisory committee talks about the policy, sets the policy for that. The state rules and laws basically describe how to apply that policy and how to um, further the state's interest in public health. And then of course, the county manager is the individual who manages and oversees the local health officer and will handle the, and handles the, the specifics of how to execute the laws and policies um, for the county. So that is the last slide that I have. I imagine there are questions. Um, I am more than happy to answer what I can. Council, questions or comments? I'll have a question on the reports given to council whenever the appropriate time is for that. I don't know if that's now. Well, let's go ahead because I have things that I want to say. So why don't I want to give everyone else a chance to either ask questions or, or make comments. Uh, this is a very complicated subject and we just went through an awful time in the history of the world uh, that highlighted the difficulties we have on our Board of Health. Uh, so Karen, go ahead, please uh, ask well, you know, or say what you wish to do. Okay, thanks. Our rules, of course, call for a monthly report from uh, the uh, from public health from Dr. Melnick, <coughs> excuse me, to the Board of Health for, on <coughs> the status of public health in the in the county and uh, what the department is is uh, working on relative to those things. Um, <clears throat> and that is a monthly report, um, which would be good. Uh, however, we've had difficulty in accomplishing that in that there were uh, several months recently when um, it, it wasn't done for whatever reason. And um, so that being skipped, we kind of lost a bit of touch. And um, I, I uh, regret that. I think that is not a good thing for uh, the Board of Health or, or the county. So rather than just making sure that that report is done, and I mentioned this recently, I'd really like to see an interim, very brief report coming from uh, public health, Dr. Melnick, um, to the Board of Health, like maybe the, the second Tuesday of the month or something like that, uh, that highlights whatever is most important at that time. We, of course, have been focusing on contagious diseases because that has been so incredibly important. But there are other issues, too, that rise to the fore um, for the department that we'd like to hear about. <clears throat> and that would include things uh, like maybe water quality or, or um, uh, maybe some of the uh, food inspections that they, that they do. Uh, but from time to time, there would be issues. And if those issues could just be presented, and I'm not talking about a long report with slides and the whole bit. I'm talking about something that simply updates the Board of Health. Might be a five minute overview or something quick. But I think that kind of regular communication um, is important for the board to really fulfill the duties that Amanda, you've just outlined here. Those are my thoughts. Thank you for that. And I would just double tap on that one. We shouldn't have lengthy gaps. We don't need a pandemic to have a weekly meeting or a monthly meeting or a bi-weekly meeting. 
we should have regular updates. And there are other topics besides contagious disease. What the Board of Health and what the health officer has such a wide portfolio from school food programs to potable water, to septic and sewer, you name it, uh, the Board of Health and the health officer are involved. Marijuana, a lot of new studies coming out, especially focused on juveniles and psychotic breaks. We need to be hearing about that. I did just get an um, email from Dr. Melnick on, on some current data. It's very different than what we heard about just a few years ago. Fentanyl, obviously we've been hearing about that, but we need to hear more every day. Um, you know, there, DUI is driving under the influence of marijuana, a polysubstance. These are health risks to the community. Uh, that we should be apprised of and the public should be kept apprised of. So I'm all in favor of, of teeing up additional topics and having regular meetings, however brief they may be, or uh, at least uh, a published uh, overview of, of health concerns for the county. So I agree, uh, Karen, wholeheartedly. We need to do more in that regard. Other comments or questions by Other counselors? Comments. Chair Mevaji. Please go ahead. Um, I really liked uh, Councillor Bowerman's suggestion about increasing our meetings um, on a monthly basis. I mean, it doesn't have to be something like significant like every week, but I really like that suggestion. And like you just mentioned, both of you, I mean, there's different things that are going on in our community. I know, um, Chair Mevaji, I think it was like six months ago you talked about about getting back to the basics of um, education for our community, like just regular things like fitness, eating right, um, things like that. And what's happening with like say fentanyl, for instance, what are we doing to educate our kids in our community um, for prevention purposes? Um, things like that. I mean, there's always something, there's always something happening. Um, so I'm sure that there's, many different topics that we can cover and educate our community about. And I am very interested in having just increased communication and education and learning everything that's going on in our community. That's it from me. Thank you. Glenn, did you have something? Yeah, just kind of piggyback on the same thing theme. Uh, and I think it, I think this could, what would be helpful for me is maybe like a, a, if we were able to get a, short weekly report and it could be via email you know that doesn't we don't need to convene a meeting for that and then you know scheduled once monthly more in depth kind of over broad view but the weekly updates and my thought would be kind of the things that are happening today and then maybe more information about some long-term things you know because when we sit on the board of health we can only make decisions based on the information that we have and we know and we are consistently dumped lots of information on sitting on the council. And so if that information is not coming to us, we don't really have the knowledge to make good decisions on policy. So however I'm open, those are just some suggestions. I don't say that they're the best thing, but just however we can be more in touch with what's going on out there would be helpful. So a few com comments for me in general that is much broader and not meant as criticism on any specific person or office, but the broader overview of our role. So uh, the pandemic highlighted this. And for all of you on boards and committees, and you're all on a lot of them, pretty much each and every one of them will bring things up staff reports, and then you vote on it. I can't think of a single time that the Board of Health has voted on anything. We are the proverbial potted plant. And that's a, a problem statewide, and it was really exacerbated by the pandemic when we were getting mandates handed to us directly without any input by us at the local level. It got so bad at times, and uh, Karen may remember this, 
you know, uh, all of the health officers from each county would be on a, a telephone call with uh, the Secretary of Health, and they would talk weekly. And there were occasions where within an hour or so, there would be a mandate from the governor's office on a topic that was not discussed by any of the health officers statewide. They basically were kept in the dark. They weren't even alerted to the possibility of a mandate coming out and being announced in an hour. That's not the way this should work. Uh, we, you know, the legislature took a stab at improving the overall um, system statewide of the boards of health. We were left largely untouched, as Amanda said, because we had our community committee. Uh, we have gone to some efforts to fill every vacancy. I think we have now. We may be still waiting on a dentist. I, that was the last opening that I thought I saw. But regardless, we've made uh, great strides in, in fulfilling that community a group for input, but now we need to do the next step, have them come to Board of Health meetings for them to make presentations. And no, we don't need someone from there telling us we should raise our property taxes. That is not their role. And that was an absurd letter we got uh, from our Board of Health Citizen Advisory Group. So, you know, I would like to um, have more participation on the Board of Health where we have a real substantive role. You know, it took years on uh, needle exchanges to even find out that we had it in the county. I'm against it. We need detox. We need residential short-term and long-term treatment. We need clean and sober living environments. It is an anachronism to spend a public health dollar on a needle on the hopes that they'll have some contact and be able to offer some treatment. It is a waste of public funds. And it's, it's an anachronism because we now have treatments and prevention for most of those blood-borne diseases that cause, you know, back in the day, it used to be unlawful. It was a misdemeanor offense in most jurisdictions to possess a needle. And then the health community, because of AIDS and because of hepatitis, uh, variants that were killing people without treatment, um, they thought, well, we need to do something to reduce the harm. Now we have treatments. We have prevention. Uh, we shouldn't be spending a single tax dollar on that. But nevertheless, um, this Board of Health, as far as I know, never voted on it to put that in place, And but it's been in place, <clears throat> I think, since about 2014. Uh, in any case, we need to be, have substantive roles. We, it was designed for us to sit and make decisions on public policy regarding health as the Board of Health. So I'm just trying to encourage my fellow counselors to insist on that. We need, we need to make decisions. They need to be teed up for us. And we need to be advised by our public health a doctor and, and his professional staff on all the implications of those decisions. Anyway, that, that's just kind of my soapbox because the, the pandemic was awful. I never felt more worthless uh, on a board of health because we weren't empowered to do anything and we were just handed mandates by the state and, and then the local public blamed us for it. Any other comments or questions? I just 100% support what you just said, Chair Mavici. So hearing um, any, anything else, Amanda? I don't have any other um, comments at this point unless. No, and I think it goes into the second part of the Board of Health um, discussion, which you've already touched on, which is agenda items and what council's wanting to see. Um, I heard about inviting FAC for updates. Um, I did want to get some clarity just on the agendas as well. Is um, the majority of the council supportive of having the more frequent, shorter updates with council? Like a second one during the month? Okay, I see. A, well, yeah, I support that. Yeah, I just want to make heard sure. some constituent complaints along that, you know, some of these gaps in meetings have been yeah. well, and, inexplicable. And, 
to clarify, and I believe I mentioned this to council, um, the reason why we didn't have one in December is our last meeting was December 6th. Uh, November was holiday. Um, so that, that is the reason why there was not uh, Board of Health for those two months. Um, so the other piece I want to um, solidify for direction um, is with Councilor Bowerman's, or no, Councilor Young's request for weekly written updates from the Board of Health. Is that something that the majority of the council will want? Because that's going to take staff time and I just um, want to make sure that we're representing what the council wants. So I, I don't want to overburden and cause uh, excessive reporting. I think if Councilor Young has a specific issue he wish, wishes to track, uh, that he should, you know, Dr. Melnick should be responsive to him or staff. Uh, I don't, I'm not going to insist on weekly updates. I mean, I recently sent, after reading some articles in the Wall Street Journal about um, psychotic breaks from marijuana in juveniles. I asked them, give me an update on that. What, what are you seeing uh, nationally uh, on health studies? Because the Wall Street Journal was reporting on national studies. And he gave it to me. And it was, um, so at some point I'd like to talk about it. So I don't know that, I, what did the other counselors want? Do you want a weekly written update uh, that's kind of generic or on specific topics? What? I'm what do you I'm wish to do? To the counselor's request for that, however, that's not something that I would request or use or need. Um, if I wanted a regular update in written form, they've got a great website, and I'd go visit that. Um, I, what I'm looking for is the interpersonal communication every other week. Michelle, concur with Councillor Bowerman. They've got great dashboards on the county health website. I, I look at it all the time, actually. <laughs> Thank you. So, Kathleen, does that answer your question? Yes. We won't be doing weekly updates with all the council. It does not prevent any counselor for asking questions, and we may actually bring that up if there's a question that comes up about something. We can add that maybe to the additional meeting or a regular board of health meeting. Um, I think might be helpful too on agendas. I mean, obviously, if there's something going on specifically that there's an update, but maybe we should add on the agenda future agenda topics so that council can help guide what do you want to see next month, um, and we can have suggestions with that as well. And I'll, I guess one more question on the FAC with them um, coming to Board of Health. Do you want them to be a regular part of the agenda, or just as requested, or as they have updates? I, I would prefer to have them as part of the regular agenda. I mean, they just as we may be at odds as a political body with, um, and we've seen that nationally over the years with cigarette smoking, sugar intake. Sometimes there's a difference of opinion uh, between the political uh, body and the health body. And so that, that's what these citizens are for, to give us that additional input from them. So I would like them as part of the agenda. Others? I, I would like to see it as part of the regular agenda as well. And again, brief. It doesn't need to be a huge, long amount of time that is, that is given to it. We simply need that ongoing communication. I concur with Councillor Bowerman. So, um, like, I just would like some more kind of detail on that. I mean, are we convening the FAC at our meetings, or are we bringing representatives of the advisory group, or what are you, what exactly are you suggesting? Yeah, so I wasn't, I didn't think ever that we would require each and every member to come to each and every Board of Health meeting. I mean, they have. A representatives. Uh, so to your answer, it would be not to convene them uh, as part of the briefing that uh, our Board of Health would receive, but just to have a representative. I don't think it ever hurts to, to have a representative come, so I'd be supportive of that if they're if they're willing to do that, but um, it doesn't it doesn't really, I, like I, I appreciate what you had mentioned before about that there can be 
difference of opinions in that group. And you know, if we bring one individual, we get one opinion. Um, so I'm not quite sure what it contributes in terms of that. But I mean, connection to the advisory group, I think, is a positive thing. Councillor Marshall is on FAC as well, um, but yes, if they have one representative that can come. I understand that uh, they may be working through their strategic planning process, which I think would be an important topic for council's discussion and input and direction, because that does set policy moving forward. So we'll, we can coordinate that. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, we don't want to overburden them. I mean, they're volunteers. Some of them are working doctors, medical, I mean, it's hard for them probably attend their own internal meetings, much less than have additional Board of Health meetings to go to. And Anyway, okay, well, I th anything else on that? And we do have legislation. I don't know where it is right now. I don't recall um, basically on the marijuana issue um, that would take away a county and city's ability um, to basically decide whether or not there's a moratorium or not within their uh, jurisdiction. Uh, the legislation, I think, was geared towards, well, you're going to have to put it to a vote before you uh, put a moratorium on marijuana. I don't know where that sits, um, but assuming it doesn't pass, um, I would like to have that as an agenda item at some Board of Health meeting, because I think it's uh, ripe to discuss, especially as the legislature is talking about driving under the influence and reducing the level of um, alcohol that would be presumptively under the influence. The problem with THC is an influence under the influence, it, there's no easy way to measure that. So our patrolmen out there, whether Washington State Patrol or any city um, policemen, I mean, it's a hard job and, and almost everyone uh, is using multiple sources of of drugs, polysubstance comes up all the time when they do tests. It's not just alcohol. And our roads, as we've been discussing in RTC, the road deaths and serious injuries are up dramatically nationally. Substance use is one of those causes. So anyway, um, we'll see what the legislature does. If, if we have no ability um, to weigh in on this issue any more than we don't. Um, but uh, I would like to see it as a future agenda item if that bill doesn't pass. Any other comments or questions before we move on? Glad you just, just one more thing that kind of occurred to me just now is, um, so just one counselor is on the FAC? I believe if so, yes. Okay. Um, I, so I have never attended one of those, but because there's always the quorum issue involved, with that, but is there a way that we can, because are those meetings recorded? Uh, I can't answer that, but um, if they're, are they open to the public? If they are, then it's on, it should be on their website on the link on how to join. Okay, as long yeah, as they're I'm, recorded. I'm sorry to interrupt, but they're, they're open to the public and they are recorded. Okay, great. Thank you. So we can view those, that'd be helpful. Yeah, and just as a reminder to any counselor, if you have all this extra time to sit on all these meetings and boards, do it. Just let Kathleen uh, or staff know just in case there's three or more and then we have to notice notice it. But feel free to, to lurk in any of those meetings. But thank you, Dr. Mellon, for clarifying that so uh, Counselor Young can go back and review all of your recorded meetings. You know, it would be even better is if we could get a good report from what was discussed that would be not required of watching a whole meeting. I don't know how that could be done because minutes I'm sure are probably very, very vague. Um, maybe if there's a topic of interest that that could be part of the five minute update on the additional meeting or on the Board of Health agenda, but I, outside of that. The but, Dr. Melnick, how many meetings have they had? I know that there was a while where we didn't have much membership, and then we did a lot of recruitment over the last year. Uh, how many meetings have they actually had? They have, they've know. been meeting monthly. Um, uh, I think over the holidays there may, you know, there, there may have been. I, I don't have the exact number, but more recently they've been meeting monthly, and we were able to fill the, um, the vacancies. Uh, we've been able to fill, and by the way, we have a qualified applicant for the 
for the dentist position. So I think we'll be pretty, uh, hopefully be pretty filled up pretty soon. Super, thank you. I think the last, Con I think there was an issue with the recording at the last FAC meeting. So, but they're, they are recorded. Okay, other questions or comments before we continue to move on? Okay, thank you, Amanda. That was great. So, uh, Chair Mabaji, you'll need to adjourn Board of Health and then let Kristen stop the recording and then start the new one for uh, council time or council retreat. Okay. Manager's my sergeant of arms and reminding me. Oh, wait, we are now going to adjourn from the Board of Health and then we'll start a new meeting and 